now we have the first roundtable of the day. So I, inv I invite all uh, the speakers of the first session and of the next session to come here on the scene. <laughs> okay, please. Okay, so uh, the goal of this session uh, is to discuss the role that universities can play in this serious game and gamification world. So. Uh, my question is uh, first to introduce, because we have discussed a lot in the previous days how is to use games to teach, but how it was for you, for your experience as student or also for as professor, to, to have to develop a game? What, what do you think, what is the, uh, what you learned developing a game? Um, well, I I think that um, uh, th there is definitely a lot to be learned uh, when you're when you're making a game, whether it's just uh, for like entertainment purposes or serious gaming. Um, but what I wanted to say, relevant to uh, uh, the universities, what is really good for uh, people like me uh, and the other students is that we're in direct contact with the uh, teachers themselves. And uh, like I said at the end of my presentation, I, I really believe that uh, to to be able to create really good serious games, you have to be in close contact with the people who are really good at teaching. And then us as designers, where our role is to communicate, uh, find the best way to communicate something, I believe that just the collaboration between the two is exactly what's needed for serious gaming, basically. And uh, I think we are in a good position because we are uh, learning. So we, uh, for us, we know how uh, we like to learn and we can make some games uh, in this way. like. Okay, I like to learn uh, in this way and doing these things, and maybe I can uh, redo it in in a game. Okay, uh, it's not really present like a PSL. Uh, it is not really the goal of, of uh, most of the teachers, but I think it is a good idea. And uh, implicitly, we do it all the days. We have some. Um, we have some exercises uh, uh, that we do uh, during our studies, and uh, yeah, without be being uh, conscious of this, um, I think yeah, we we apply this directly um, uh, already uh, now. So that could be a good um, good opportunity. I think the the teacher should go in this way and. Yeah, that's a good perspective for the future. Um, with my game, I think my main uh, lesson was that the player is not always going to behave in the way that you expect them to. So, uh, so I can I tested it, of course, by getting people to play it. But they they played the game um, just as a fun game. But there was another aspect in my game that they were able to use it to participate in scientific research. And you know, m my friends and family are not really going to sit down and participate in scientific research. So I didn't get a lot of data on that. So uh, I think it, it was easy for me to assume that my, my project was somehow unique and that uniqueness would be great. But actually, there was there's a lot of other stuff out there on similar lines that I should have learned from. Um, uh, I think that in the field of education, you, r you realize that you need, you need a lot of competences to, to develop, to design a good game, the high quality, and especially if you are interested in developing a game with a complex content, um, which is not just maybe just facts or just really to help, for example, uh, children to conceptualize uh, and acquire new 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 knowledge, complex knowledge, and then maybe it's really important to to work in team, to have people which 
who have different kind of competences and to involve also the user, the teacher, and the, the students or children who are going to, to use the game to be sure that, it's going, that you are going to, to reach your target. Okay, thank you. Uh, so in all of your experience, you worked also with uh, the client, I think. Oh, so you have the teacher, you have you, students, but you have also uh, the client. How, how was the interaction uh, with the final uh, user, maybe? But also, uh, for example, in your case, you, you work also with uh, some expert in physics. So how, how was this excha exchange? Um, well, well, I would say in my case, uh, uh, the, the information and the kind of like um, uh, interactions with the final users was, was a bit uh, skewed in a sense because working with a physicist means that they already know the topic that they're approaching and that uh, they're already having fun, you know, like saying, uh, oh, I'll ionize you, you know, and I'm going to do this and, and whatever. And so, so um, when I'm working with the physicists, um, I'm mainly uh, um, getting uh, feedback on, a, oh, would it be possible to actually do this thing, which I know is possible in the, in the field of physics, you know, and stuff. So from them, I normally will receive information that uh, helps me to find uh, new possible rules for the game and how it may be taken further. But when I'm um, having users like uh, my parents or my friends or people like that that have no idea about uh, uh, particle physics, uh, then the approach is, is quite a bit different and it takes a bit more time to uh, have them understand uh, not to be scared from the, the big words such as quarks and leptons and stuff like that uh, and to try and look more uh, at uh, the, the whole kind of concept of the uh, pictograms, the uh, visual language that was created to try and simplify the kind of like the learning curve of such a complex uh, subject basically. Right. It was similar for, for you. Yes, uh, I think it's really important to, to test the game all the time during you, you develop it uh, with the, the users you want to that will use your game because they are the principal uh, interested of, uh, of it. So, yes, um, if you uh, don't do this, uh, maybe you will have a lot of uh, surprise at the in the end, and you maybe you will have to go back uh, and do something again, and you will lose some time. So uh, even if the game is maybe not totally finished, it's uh, I think it's good to to meet people and uh, have their feedback and know how to do this for them. Take the know-how inside your game. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, for us, we didn't see my position yet, but I will be after. So we tested the game on 150 um, uh, kids, and we tried to have a really close group with the uh, with the final user. So this is why uh, we could actually now sell some some stuff that we actually created. So we have customer now because we actually tested on like 150 uh, kids before we actually sold anything. So I think that testing is kind of like what we should do before we actually uh, release any kind of a uh, serious game you know, on the market because then we know that sh what you did is good enough that you can sell. Thank you. Um, so the idea is also that uh, I think uh, this workshop, this symposium is a really good point that because it brings together different kind of universities but also we are so that uh, also the industry is, is here. So I, I'm quite curious how the industry come uh, to you for example, in uh, your projects. Yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, I wanted to, to do something really concrete for my master project. So that's why I've chosen to work directly in a company. And um, yeah, so this is really motivating actually because um, uh, we, we implement something for people who need this and um, yeah we always uh, I've been during my studies I've I've never I've never seen my work uh, published somewhere this is always something that you you throw away and uh, you have to keep after yeah. finish so yeah, that's exactly. it. So 
but I, I wanted to change this and before that I had um, I had uh, changed my way to to see things and I've chosen to integrate this uh, this company to help that the people and not just uh, search things and uh, not any other okay I don't know if in the public there is someone from the industry that or university that can add something yeah um, for me for example I have uh, I work not in, in game, but in a, a huge project with a lot of partners and uh, four years, four school, um, EPCL, uh, local engineer studio, head, and the University of, of G uh, Freiburg. And um, we build a house. We, we go to the US uh, for a competition. And I think that what can do the school and university on this stuff is to link people. Because when you, you want to, to try to do something like that uh, when you're a basic student, it's very hard to have the contact with different kind of competence. And th this stuff is that something that can be do by the, uh, the university and make also contact with partner uh, industrial partner on this stuff. So I think for the moment it's it's growing this aspect, but the link is not enough strong for the moment to promote this kind of project uh, for serious gaming or or us or um, other stuff like that. Um, one one guy one guy in the uh, of stuff very sp uh, specific with this uh, this kind of project uh, is a game is that you need to have this multi multiple multiple uh, point of view. Without that, you don't do a good game. So um, I just wanted to add something about the, um, the application of the client in, in the university project is not always the case uh, for most of the project that uh, we have presented from the ed. Uh, the actually first client was us and it was very rich for us to start with what we really wanted to do, uh, what was our wishes and then all the normally rules that you are given by the client was our rules, so we really created something that we loved, and then we find the client, uh, the public for it. It's what it's a kind of weird way to do it. We also have client for other workshop or or thing like that, but I think it's kind of a really, really good place uh, for finding what we really want to do, what we really like to do, and in which direction we want to work after the school, because it's kind of what what we have in the university. So that's just my point of view. Yeah, right. I think uh, the first time that everyone wants to develop a game, I think uh, he wants to develop it for uh, himself. And so th that's good client because every, so we can say every person with the same profile, it's probably a client. So. If you are uh, like a lot of other people, so maybe it's uh, also a, a good solution because you are really motivated to do so. But I think also as the uh, keynote speaker uh, this morning <laughs> presented, it's very important to have this kind of hub that bring together uh, different competencies so that we can share the know-how, we can share what we know. And uh, for example, if us, coders, we need someone that can do something nice and visually attractive, we need to, to work with you, for example. So I think it will be very nice also in Switzerland, so in for the Swiss context, to have something that bring everyone together. After we can move one step uh, higher and go to uh, Europe and uh, have uh, some European communities that can work uh, together. So I think this really, this symposium is a good point that we can meet, we can share our experiences and uh, start working together. So as Stefan said before, we can start for free with the free students. <laughs>
But after it's very important, I think that also companies come and join uh, the, the, the adventure because we have to provide some added value to that. I have a question, it's a um, little bit uh, out of topic, but uh, I'm coming from the industry. And since uh, uh, yesterday I'm, I'm uh, hearing about um, how it can be useful for students, how it can be useful for serious game developers, but we are not talking about the industry itself, uh, how it can be useful for the more provocative question. Um, uh, if I want to develop a game, serious game in my company. Why do I need some serious game developer or from students or from ac academic world if I can develop it uh, internally? So um, I can reserve the sources for this and say, okay, I uh, one developer, one, one uh, artist in my company and just say, I don't need really a good game design for my game, I just want to to share the point with my customer and make a VR gadget game for, for a congress. So what is the advantages of uh, game developers, of service game developers, of students for, uh, from an industrial point of view? I would say that uh, if you want to be efficient, you have to create a very good immersive experience for your user. And so you have to take this aspect of that. Because I'm not sure that you are able to have the, the inventivity and the experience in an awful world called mechanics gameplay just to improve your, your user experience. That's the key. I mean, of course, you can have the, techni the technical work tools. You can uh, hire great artist, but it's not sufficient to make something to be immersed, to be an, an immersive experience. Thierry, maybe you want to add something? Uh, yeah, that your final user in general will be used to play uh, commercial games. And um, commercial games is at r really high quality, really, really high quality. And uh, if you want to touch them, it could be uh, also graphic quality effort, animation, sounds, and so many things that make a game. In fact, you need a designer to do this. <laughs> you need somebody who can answer the program. Mm -hmm. It could be a designer, a game designer, or it could be just a specialist with the, uh, the, the, the right answer. Uh, let's see, the, up to a certain extent, the question is which is the problem? Because if you want to do a game just to communicate, to report, or to inform, to make people aware of your game, well, that's, ar uh, that's advertising uh, with a little bit of gamification or whatsoever. But if you're trying to change the behavior of the person who's using the, the, the game, well, sorry, not the designer, not the developer, but you need somebody that works on the brains of the people, mm, a psychologist that understand which is the behavior they want to change. And in the end, let's see, if you have people that are there doing games every day, in the end, it's much more efficient as uh, the, the Bill was saying. Keep it simple. Your business probably, you are not in the industry of games. You are not in the games of wheels. You are not in the games of engines. Hmm? You buy a, a, a car to move your people. You don't build your own car. So it's more or less this thing. It's, uh, why, why this is a, a serious problem in a lot of industries. That, hey, I need to reinvent the wheel. You don't say in those words. But there, there is people here that they are specialists in this. Use them. It is much more efficient. And you take care of your own business and you leave this for them. The question here is how you formulate the problem. Hmm? The initial question is the, is the critical one. What do you want to get out of that? 
why are you want to why are you willing to use a game? Well, perhaps the game is not the is, is not the solution. Think about the question. It's okay. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, the, uh, my question is how to get out of the university. I mean, you find the solution. You do because you don't want to be mass market. But these two girls, for example, have a big idea. Do you want to quit the company? Or what's your plan? Um, the plan is that we built. <laughs> um, th thanks to the university, we built a really advanced prototype. But uh, for now, it's too big, it's too complex to move on. So uh, the plan is to find people in interesting by this piece, maybe with chain some change or some adjustment, and is to build it, but for a client, for, for uh, somebody with, uh, with some problem and some um, uh, constraint, and to build something for somebody. Um, <laughs> how? 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 How to find the problem? Ah, uh, we plan to uh, write a big folder <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to just to to looking for like maybe bra bar or brand or a museum and to like ask to ask to lots of people and we will see. And to solve your product, you you sell selling. So I I'm waiting for your presentation. But yeah. um, uh, the, uh, the idea for you is to solve something. If you want to solve something, you need a company. No. Or yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, is it for me or, or oh, both? I mean, for for for, for me. Uh, how, how so I'm coming from the uh, from the university, and I created my my spin-off for for doing that. So the idea is that I believe in the product, so I decided to, uh, to create my, my own company to actually uh, do it. So um, so now we are looking for investor, but I mean, the idea is that the first product is done, we, we show that we can do it, and the idea is to, to scale it up. So I mean, for, for me, if, if I have an advice or anything is that uh, if you believe in your product, you should just continue and try to find uh, money or funds. And um, hopefully if it's a good idea, it, it, would, it would work. That's kind of my, uh, my answer. Uh, I agree uh, with him. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, as Margot said, we will, uh, we we will go directly to the people we think that could be interested in, in our project. And because otherwise, if we just stay in hoping that people will meet us one day and, and want to, to make a, uh, our project possible, it, it won't happen, never. So we have to go directly to them and meet them and show what we, we can do. I have another question because I'm French and I know nothing about Lucian and uh, so we need the educational system here. Do you have some help to create a company after a thing like that? You have a product, but you, con uh, you, you c make the conception in the university with the help of the university. Do you have the right to set up a company, take this thing and make money with it? Yeah, actually it's, it's kind of a goal of the, of the government. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a professor, so I, I know how it works, like you know, to do transfer of technology from university to, uh, to companies. And there are like tools like from the government, they would actually uh, give you some funds and it would actually go like you would have like a startup kind of uh, challenge and you would go and like the first prize, like the first time you get 10,000 and then if it's good enough, you get 50,000. If it's good enough, you get 100,000. So, I mean, there are like some, some tools for people to come from 
uh, in, from uh, university to, to industry like this way. So there are kind of um, big willing of, of the states to have more uh, small, uh, small, small enterprise. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I think the, the last question on the same yeah. on the same line, uh, you get support to get money somehow. But you know, in the end, reality is multidisciplinary. Not only is 3D, but it is multidisciplinary. So basically, I am my, with all my ignorance, I understand that you come from technology part of, of academia. So you know a lot about the software, you know a lot about the games. Mm -hmm. But do you have any kind of mechanism in place that allows you to talk for example, to the law school to answer uh, his question about, hey, am I, I have, do I have the right? How can I protect this IPR? Are you, there is any channel to be in contact with the MBA, with the, the guys of business that can help you with the marketing stuff and with the, there is anything in, in that side? Because money can buy a lot of things, but in, in, inside university you have a lot of colleagues. True. Do you have anything in place? That's the, the question. Uh, I mean, everyone, everyone is welcome to actually go to uh, to uh, economic school and ask them like if they could help. I mean, like I know, like in uh, in my school, in my university, uh, people could actually go and ask. They have a problem to to do stuff, and you could actually ask a professor, and he would actually give students to do it. I mean, there are like opportunities for uh, for people to, to 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 get help from from the university, and that is for sure. And for me, from I'm inside, so it's even easier for me because I know them all. But I would say that my, the help that I get from other schools, anybody can get it. Just ask and you will get help from, from university for sure. I mean, that's kind of the, the idea that if you don't ask, you won't have help. So for me, if anyone wants to get help from, from school or from university, from university of applied science, just email some some professor and I'm sure he will reply to you and ask and say is I'm I'm the right guy or I'm not the right guy you should ask my colleague. I think that's something that uh, schools are kind of really welcoming. I, I think that's uh, that's definitely true that you can you can go and ask uh, different uh. schools if you can uh, uh, get in contact with the students for them to to help you out or things like that. But um, uh, I know that um, uh, in the first year of my masters. Uh, the, the kind of like the people that were responsible for our, uh, some, of, some of our lessons tried to get in contact with the HEPIA, which is uh, like literally like 30 seconds away from, from the building where, uh, where I was. Uh, and we went there to pitch uh, certain of our projects. Uh, and the teachers over there were really interested in our projects and thought they were really cool and tried to motivate some of the students to uh, come and participate in our projects. However, uh, the problem seemed to be that uh, the vision that the students had over there were completely different to the visions that we were proposing, which is uh, they were looking for a technical challenge only, the same as uh, this person was kind of mentioning a bit before. They're, they they kind of look for this, uh, I, I want to be able to do this really complex challenge. I'm not looking for uh, like a project where uh, somebody needs this help to be able to create this experience or something like that. So I think that people often make a mistake in the vision, the initial vision, and I believe that uh, between the schools, it would be really cool if there could be this kind of idea of creating a similar vision and then putting students together from different disciplines to work together. Okay, just last reply. <laughs> but, but for me, I mean, um, you cannot force anyone to do anything. I mean, for like students, if they don't like, uh, if they like more like challenges, like technical challenges than, than working in the company, that's, that's their right. And I mean, I can only talk for my school, but for, for us, we try to uh, to foster like uh, this kind of, of behavior. We have like a like a business experience program, and we actually team up uh, people from tourism, from uh, um, computer science, and from from business, and they try to do their own businesses. So uh, the idea is that they do the same thing as you did. So they go, they pitch the idea, and if they find someone that are willing to work with them, we give them like credit for that. So we have, I mean, this is school in the, uh, dependence, but some, some schools they have, they have so some, some schools don't, but the, the idea is that you still have to find like, people that are interested to help you to in, your, in, your, uh, in your challenges. Thank you a lot, everyone. It was a pleasure for me to meet you today. So let's move to the break. <laughs>